Hi everyone, welcome to this session. Um, today we are going to see a gradient. It's an important concept in uh, machine learning, uh, especially when we learn uh, the uh, artificial neural network and it's uh, in its training phase. Uh, the gradient is uh, a, an important one. Okay. So before moving on to gradient, uh, we should know some uh, concepts uh, in uh, based on functions. First is a unit variate function and uh, we have seen different kind of functions like uh, one to one function, one to function uh, like that and based on the number of inputs we can categorize functions like univariate function and uh, multivariate function. And univariate function is nothing but which has a single variable. That means there is only one input to the function. For example, f of x is equal to x square. So here input is x and the output is x square. And <coughs> here we have only one variable x. So multivariate function, uh, function which has more than one variables. Okay, it can have two variables or three variables, etc. That means it, it takes more than one input and gives one output. Okay, functions with the multiple variable f of, uh, for example, f of x, y is equal to x square plus y cube. That means here we have two inputs x and y and the output is x square plus y cube. Okay, so x and y are the variables here. And next term we should understand is uh, difference quotient. The difference quotient is uh, is the is equal to the change in output divided uh, divided by change in input. Okay, or we can say that the rate of change of uh, output with respect to um, the input. Okay, and its representation is like this: delta y by delta x. <coughs> and what is this? Uh, we can see an example. So, for example, uh, consider this function. This red line shows a function f of x. Okay, so let's take two values uh, at this point. Okay, this point, uh, assume this is x0. So, this is the input to the function and the output of the function will be this one, y0. Okay, or we can say uh, it as f of x0. Okay, f of x0 is named as y0 over here. Okay, then uh, we have to uh, consider another point over here and uh, its x value is uh, assume it is x dash okay difference between uh, x dash and x zero is actually a small value we name it as delta x okay and uh, consider uh, if uh, uh, this is x and we uh, make a small change to this x zero we will get x dash and what will be the output when the input is x dash so that is this y dash Okay, or in other words, we can label it as f of uh, uh, x0 plus delta x. Okay, so here the change in input is delta x. Then we have to find out the change in output. That means y dash minus y dash minus uh, y0. Okay, so what is that? That is actually uh, delta y. Okay, so uh, delta y by uh, delta x will give you the rate of change of uh, output or y with respect to x. Okay, that means uh, if we make a small change in the input, what is the change in output? That is it. Okay, so it's an important concept in um, uh, training uh, network, uh, neural network. Okay. And uh, we can write it in another way. This delta y is can be written as f of uh, x0 uh, delta x okay this is actually x0 plus delta x minus f of x or f of x0 okay general in general we take it as x instead of x0 divided by change in x that is delta x okay that is delta y by delta x is equal to this one and uh, uh, if we consider a line connecting these two points f of x0 and f of x0 delta x x0 plus delta x this line is actually called as a secant line okay you, you know that we have uh, studied it in the high school classes okay it's a secant line and uh, what this actually gives is it will give you the slope of the secant line how much incline the secant line to the x-axis that is it okay 
So it computes this formula, computes the slope of the secant line through uh, two points on the graph of f. And if you uh, uh, want more clarity, you can go to this YouTube uh, video. Uh, they give a graphical representation of these uh, uh, secant lines and uh, the tangent. Okay. And what is actually a tangent? We when we uh, reduce the distance between these two points. Okay, if we reduce the delta x, this point will come over here and if I reduce again, it will come over here and it will reduce, again, it will come here like that. Okay, and uh, when this delta x too small, it represents the almost same point. Okay, and what happens this to the secant line? Secant line will not, uh, will, uh, in, the, in these cases, the secant line actually cut the curve at two points. Okay, so when we reduce the distance between these two points x0 and x dash, what happens is the secant line will go just like this, it just touches the line, that's all. So at that time we call it as a tangent. Okay, and now we are going to see the tangent. Okay, as delta x becomes too small, the secant line becomes a tangent. It just touches a point on the curve. And uh, what is, uh, why we are interested in tangent is, um, we want to know the slope of the tangent or we want to know the slope of the curve. Okay, so if we have a curve like this, I want to know what is the slope of this line at this particular point or what is the slope of this curve at this particular point. I want to know that. So, if I want to know the uh, slope of the curve or the inclination of the curve, what we want to do is we have to find out the slope of the tangent at that point. That's the interesting part here. Okay. So, uh, when we consider the slope of the tangent or the slope of the curve, we can have two kind of uh, slopes. One is positive slope and the other one is negative slope. And these two concepts are very important and you should be very clear about these two points. Positive slope and negative slope. Okay. So, uh, consider a graph in the xy plane like this, okay. This is the graph and uh, you assume, uh, suppose I want to find the uh, in a tangent or uh, the slope of the tangent at this particular point or a point somewhere here. So, what to do is we have to draw a tangent there then find out the inclination of that uh, uh, tangent, okay. So, this is the slope. We have to find out the slope of this uh, tangent. And uh, uh, we can see that this uh, slope is an increasing slope. That means as x increases, the y increases. When you look at the uh, tangent, we can see like that. Okay. So, it is an increasing uh, or it is growing upwards. This line is growing upwards like this. Okay. So, that means that it is a positive slope or in other words, there is a, a positive relation between this x and y over here in this case because as x increases, y increases. Okay, there is a direct relation. It moves upwards and as x increases, y increases. So, th these kind of slopes are called a positive slope. And what is negative slope? So, consider the plane, xy plane and consider the line uh, a graph like this. Okay, it's a function uh, and find, I want to find the slope at this point. So, draw the tangent and find out the slope of the tangent and what is this? Uh, um, it, it is different from the first one. See, here it is growing upwards. It is, uh, it is, it is, in the second case, it is going downwards. That means that uh, there is a negative relation between x and y. That means as x increases, y decreases. Okay, so that is why it is called the negative slope. Okay, it is moves downwards as x increases, y decreases. Okay, so this is positive slope and negative slope. And how do we find out the slope actually? If we have, if we want to find out the slope of a tangent at a particular point, how will we calculate it? Okay, in order to find out the slope of the tangent or slope of the function at a particular point, we have to find out the derivative of the function. That's enough. Okay, we can find out the derivative of the function, first derivative that will give you the slope. Okay, so this is the, uh, uh, there are some uh, 
differentiation rules okay so we are not going uh, deep into this uh, um, notation it's actually coming from the previous one uh, in that uh, instead of delta x we have uh, substituted h and when h tending to 0 that means these two points are very close uh, this will be the equation for uh, this that is df by dx is actually rate of change of f with respect to x okay f is the function and x is the input okay this is actually the first derivative and this derivation uh, this function or uh, this um, der uh, first derivative derivative will give you the slope of the function okay and there are some basic rules in uh, differentiation okay there are uh, mainly four rules one is the uh, product rule um, product rule then quotient rule sum rule and chain rules okay we have a combination of functions and if we want to find out the derivative of them we can make use of these things okay if the function is represented as a uh, product of two other functions okay f of x and g of x so it's a the function is represented as a product of two functions f and g and we want to find out the derivative of that how do we do f dash x f dash x is actually uh, so f is the function uh, then uh, f dash represents its derivative first derivative okay so f dash x into g of x plus f of x into g dash x okay f dash x into g of x plus f of x into g dash x okay that is the product rule then uh, quotient rule is uh, if uh, one function is uh, represented as a uh, ratio of or uh, the form of a division of two different functions and if you want to find out the derivative what we do is f dash x g of x minus f x minus g dash x divided by g of x the whole square this is the rule we have to apply then the sum rule if the function is represented as a sum of two different functions we uh, we can do it like this f dash x plus g dash x then the chain rule and this is the most important uh, rule that we apply in machine learning that is chain rule okay that means one function uh, the input of one function is another function okay g is the function and its input is another function f okay and if we have a function like this how do we find out the derivative okay so uh, this is the composition representation g composition f that means g is a function of f okay like that so how do we write it g dash f of x into f dash x okay find the derivative of the function g then multiply it with the derivative of the function f okay that's it we can see an example here here we have the function h of x is equal to 2x plus 1 and uh, all raised to 4. So we can find out, we can uh, consider this as a function. Okay, we take it as f, f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. So how can we represent the h? h can be written like this um, in the form of g, g of f is equal to f raised to 4. Okay, so it is, it actually represents h of x okay h of x is given in this form g of f is equal to f raised to 4 so what is f f is 2x plus 1 and um, uh, how do we find out this g of f of x that is uh, g of f of x how do we find the derivative we have to find out the derivative of g dash into uh, f dash and what is the derivative of g dash g dash is equal to uh, it's a polynomial f raised to 4 4 into f raised to 3 that is g dash and what is f f is 2x plus 1 so what is f dash f dash uh, is uh, 2x is 2 uh, plus 0 okay it's 2 f dash is equal to 0 so the thing is here this g is uh, f, uh, in terms of f okay the variable here is f so we take it as actually uh, uh, dg divided by df it's actually like that and this is uh, df divided by dx okay here the variable is x 
and how do we find out the final derivation g dash into f dash so g dash is uh, 4 f raised to 3 into uh, f dash is 2 okay it is actually 8 f raised to 3 and what is f f is 2x plus 1 so it will be written like 8 into 2x plus 1 all raised to 3 okay so that is the final answer get okay that's how we apply the uh, chain rule then partial differentiation and gradient so uh, these things uh, are uh, applicable to the um, uh, univariate function so if there is only one variable there is no confusion uh, we can directly find out the first derivative and when it comes to multivariate function we have a partial derivations partial differentiation okay uh, so assume we have a function f of x y is equal to x square y so here two variables x and y then the partial derivatives gives the rate of change of f with respect to x and at the same time we keep y as a constant okay that is partial derivative that means we have more than one variables and we are finding out the change in the output with respect to a particular variable only that is we represent it as dou f by dou x is equal to 2xy okay that means we keep y as the constant and uh, uh, take the derivative of x square so x square is 2x into y and that is the partial derivative with respect to x now we can find out the partial derivative with respect to y so in that case we keep x as a constant so x square will be a constant and the derivative of y is 1 so it is actually x square into 1 that is x square so that is partial derivative so uh, partial derivative comes into picture when we have multivariate functions so we want to find out the rate of change of a function with respect to a particular input and you can uh, refer these two youtube channels um, these two videos will give you a, a good intuition about the partial differentiation. Then let's see an example f of xy is equal to xy square plus x cube. Mm, find out the partial derivative with respect to x dou f by dou x which is equal to um, we keep x uh, as the variable and y as the constant. So y square as a constant and uh, the first derivative of x will be 1. So, 1 into y square is y square. Then 3x square will be uh, like this 3x square. x cube will be 3x square. And dou f by dou y is 2xy. Okay. That means um, uh, we are keeping x as a constant and y square as the variable. So, y, x is a variable uh, constant. x into y square will be 2y raised to 1 plus x cube is a constant so uh, the derivation will be 0 that is equal to 2xy that's what you have then uh, so those these are the uh, derivatives partial derivatives with respect to x and y and what is gradient gradient is a vector that is made of all the partial derivatives of the function so we find out all the derivatives uh, partial derivatives with respect to all the variables and we combine it into uh, in the form of a vector uh, specifically a raw vector then we call it as a gradient so for example in this case uh, f of x y is equal to x y square plus x cube the last example uh, del f okay we can represent it as del or uh, or we we can call it as del or uh, nabla okay so del f is equal to that is a representation of gradient uh, dou f by dou x dou f by dou y so, so the partial derivatives are written in the form of a vector a raw vector okay so the answer to be take the answer from the previous example y square plus 3 square to x y so this is the gradient of this function okay another example with the three variables x x y and z dou f uh, del f is equal to dou f by dou x dou f by dou y dou f by dou z okay find out the derivatives we get it like this okay so the uh, gradient will be 
uh, like this. So uh, I have the space constraint here. So I have written it as a column matrix and uh, put the transpose of it here. So it represents the row vector itself. Okay. So this is the gradient of this function. Okay. For x, y, z. And uh, you can try out these two questions also. And the uh, formal definition of gradient let f of x is a function with the n variables x1 x2 etc xn and f of x is a mapping from rn to r and x from uh, f of x x to f of x then gradient of f is defined as del x of f is equal to grad, uh, grad f so we can use uh, either this notation or this notation is equal to uh, df by dx that is the first derivative is represented as a collection of the partial derivatives. So, dou fx divided by dou x1, dou fx divided by dou x2, etc., dou fx divided by dou xn. Okay, so this is the gradient, uh, formal definition of the gradient of a function. So, this collection actually represents the uh, first derivative. Okay, so these are the first derivative okay this is these are the partial derivative so these per collection of these partial derivatives this combination will represent the entire first derivation of the function then the basic rules for partial derivation is the same as that of the uh, differentiation um, then uh, product rule sum rule and chain rule uh, product rule is if the function is written in the form of uh, the product of two other functions f and g then the derivation can be written like this f dash g plus f into g dash okay then the sum rule if the function is, uh, is written as a composition of two sum of two functions f and g then uh, the derivation will be f dash plus g dash chain rule same as before uh, g of f will be written as g dash into f dash okay and it's uh, different representation is like this dou, uh, dou by dou x of f of x g of x is equal to dou f by dou x into g of x the same representation uh, same thing but we use the dou representation that's all okay and the chain rule is uh, important you have to keep it in mind that there's dou g f um, dou by dou x of g x g of f of x is equal to dou by dou x of g of f of x which is equal to dou g by dou f into dou f by dou x okay so we can give uh, uh, take an example like this assume f is a function of x1 x2 etc um, and then uh, sorry x1 x2 then the function is f of x1, x2. x1 is a function of t, that is x1 of t. And x2 is also a function of t, x2 of t. Okay, then uh, df by dt, uh, df by dt, okay. f is actually the function and its direct variables are x1 and x2. And uh, in x1 is again a function and its fun variable is t. Okay, x2 is also a function, its variable is t. Okay, we want to find out the derivative of this function with respect to this variable. Okay, that is df by dt. And how do we find out df by dt is equal to dou f by dou x1. Okay, into dou x1 by dou t. Okay, so that is the derivative of f with respect to x1 into uh, derivative of x1 with respect to t okay plus f of x derivative of f with respect to the second variable x2 and the derivative of x2 with respect to t okay so that is the chain rule we apply and it can be written in the matrix form like this dou f by dou x1 in uh, dou f by dou x2 that's the first matrix the second matrix gives you the x1 and the t uh, terms x1 uh, dou x1 by dou t and dou x by x2 by dou t Okay, so it will be written as a product of these two matrices. So the differentiation can be calculated like this. This matrix representation is also important. 
So for example, we have a function like this. Okay. Then df by dt is uh, d, dou f by dou x1 into dou x1 by dou t plus dou f by dou x2 into dou x2 by dou t. So we have to find out the each term. We have four terms over here. First of all, df dou f by dou x1. Dou f by dou x1. So x2 will be a constant and the x1 term will be written like this 2x1. x1 square will be 2x1 uh, and what is x1? x1 is sin t. So substitute for that 2 sin t and df by dx2. So here x1 should be kept as a constant. So this term will be 0 and uh, the, this term will be equal to 2. Then dou x1 by dou t sin uh, derivation of sin t will be cos t. Then dou x2 by dou t that is uh, uh, derivative of cos will be minus sin okay minus sin t then substitute these four values in the equation we get it like this okay and uh, multiply and take out the sin con two sin t outside so we will get it like this so this is the first derivative of this function then if we have uh, two functions in this case we in in x x is a function of t alone and the x2 is also a function of t and uh, if we have more than one variables over here that is the example here and that is x1 is a function of s and t x2 is a function of s and t okay so this x1 x2 has again and these two are multivariate functions again so how do we find out uh, dou f by dou s will be Mm, dou f by dou x1 into dou x1 by dou s plus dou f by dou x2 into dou x2 by dou s. Then, and similarly, we have to find out dou s f by dou t. Okay, with respect to s and with respect to t. Okay, the same way it will be like dou f by dou x1 into dou x1 by dou t plus dou f by dou x2 into dou x2 by dou t. Okay, so the gradient can be written like this. Um, it will be uh, the matrix representation is much easier to represent dou f by dou x1 dou f by dou x2 okay so this is uh, these are the partial derivatives of f with respect to its immediate variables x1 and uh, x2 okay and in the second matrix it, the expansion like this uh, the uh, derivative of x1 with respect to its uh, variables okay Mm, and uh, that is the first row will be representing the derivatives of x1 with respect to its variables and the second row will give you the derivative of x2 with respect to its variables okay so that is um, the easiest representation of uh, the gradients okay so you can expand this representation when uh, the number of uh, functions or number of variables increases that is that will be easier so if you have three variables over here you can add one more element here dou f by dou x3 and similarly um, uh, this uh, the second row will also contain one more second matrix will also contain one more row to represent x3 and similarly, if you have uh, more variables in this, uh, in these functions, uh, then the number of columns will also increase over here. Okay, so that is the um, uh, easiest way to scale the representation. Okay, so that is all about uh, gradients. Gradients actually represents the uh, a vector that has all the partial derivatives of the function. Okay. So that is all uh, about gradient and uh